this is A1 electricity. Uh, the basics or prerequisite of this chapter are primarily from O levels in IGCSE basic electricity. So if you're weak in that chapter, please go revise that chapter first and then start with this lesson. Okay. But if you're already confident about that, that you can revise this, but you can watch this video throughout the end. Uh, there will be some things that are assumed that you already know. So let's move ahead with the questions and basic concepts that what is different in terms of uh, A levels electricity. Okay. So first, he wants you to understand that electric current is the flow of uh, charge carriers, and we know that, right? We understand that uh, charge carriers are present in the conductor. Uh, in most conductors, what are those? Those are actually electrons, right? Electrons are responsible for carrying electricity, electrical energy from one point to another. Uh, and you do this in chemistry as C of freely delocalized electrons. Now, how, what motivates these electrons to move in a specific direction? So basically, through a conductor, let's say, we have applied a certain voltage. We applied a certain voltage, let's say that this terminal is connected to positive and this terminal is connected to negative. So what happens? Uh, there is a positive electric field at this point and a negative electric field at this point. So if there are electrons present inside this conductor, which are free to move, they have free will to move, then they're going to move towards the positive terminal. So they're going to move in this direction, like this, back to the battery, towards this side, and then towards this side. But <clears throat> this is the electron flow, which we are not familiar with in daily life. What we are familiar with, what we have accepted in daily life, is the conventional flow of electricity, which is from the positive to the negative terminal, like this. And in physics, wherever we're going to draw a battery or a cell, or we're going to do circuit analysis, we will be dealing with conventional current. And conventional current is always from positive of the battery to the negative of the battery, as shown by the black arrow. Okay, so we understand the first point. <clears throat> now we move on to the point number two, which is that the charge carrier is quantized. Now this is a very rare question. Sometimes it comes in the examination and very rarely. This is asked for the, for, from the students, but students that's why students overlook this because it's other puchani jata. But what is the meaning of quantized? Quantized means that this is a discrete value. Discrete means that there is a definite answer for the charge on the electron. And what is that value? That one electron has a charge of 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulombs. This is a definite value. We know this, right? We formulas, calculations, etc. We have answer to this. Now, it is not that we have a charged body. Hai. Let's say there is a positive charge or a negative charge on the body. And this is probably 3.2 times the electrons or 3.5 electrons. It is not that. In our experience, we have to say that uh, charges stored on any object will be quantized, will be discrete, will be definite. It can either be three or it can either be two. It can't be half or a decimal value of the other. Which is ka matlab kya hoga? Ke 1.6 ka integer ho sakta hai. There can be an integer multiple of 1.6, but a fractional multiplication ya decimal number nahi ho sakta. Now, this is quantization or that the charge is quantized. So, iska question kaisa hai? Uh, this is taken from the latest paper of May June 2023. Now, he says, what is the possible combination of a charge carrier? Now, he is eventually asking you about quantization. That do you know that it is going to be a quantized number? Now, we know that one electron has 1.6 into 10 is to power minus 19. Now, since every single one of them has a power of minus 19, this means that I have to minus 19 ko quick calculation ke duran, or at least quickly solve karne ke liye mujhe isko involve karne ki zarurat nahi I don't need to involve this in calculations if you if you want to do that then be my guess it's your choice it's going to only make them the calculations longer so how do we test whether this is a quantized particle or not so we just multiple we just divide these options that are given to you with the 1.6 power minus 19 so divide this number with 1.6 into 10 raised to power minus 19 and see what do you get similar fashion for all of them divide them with this number and see what happens. Let me show you what's actually happening. So fraction, uh, we have 1.1 power minus 19. I repeat, adding minus 19 does not change the question. I'm just adding this for those who are not comfortable with this. So when we calculate this, we get 0 0.685, which becomes 0 0.69, for example. This is not possible. This is what I was talking about. That is either it can be three, either it can be two. There needs to be an integer. It can't be a decimal value. It is a fixed value. It is a fixed 
integer value. Let's move on to option B. Now option B suggests, I'm just going to edit this formula. It says four multiplied by this, divide by this. So four divided by this gives me again a fractional answer. So if this is actually equals to 2.5 times the electronic charge, which is the elementary charge, this one. Again, this is not the answer. I'm looking for an integer. So let's edit with this 4.8. So 4.8 divided by 1.6. This is an integer number. This is the answer. But for the interest of science, let's go ahead. So now we have 9.1. So 9.1 is equal to 5.68, which is 5.7 electronic charge, which is not a quantized number. It should have been either 5 or should have been 6. This should have been 2. This should have been 3. This could have been 1, 2, 3, or anything, but not a decimal number. This is where that quantization concept or at least question is going to be asked from you. So we understand question number two as well, uh, point number two as well. Now, the third part says that we need to understand what is Q equals to IT. So we understand from O levels that uh, current is defined as rate of flow of charges or you can say number of electrons divided by time. Now, we know that the elementary charge is 1.6 into 10 raised to power minus 19 coulombs. These will be number of electrons. Of course, they are going to be very, very high in number to balance out this negative 19 power. And of course, time will be in second. Now, if you take this over there, we get the equation that Q equals to IT, which is going to look like a familiar equation in part number three or part three of the syllabus. How we are going to use this? I'll get to that later. Point number four requires that we need to understand this expression, which is I equals to A and VQ, wherein is a charge density. Now, let's discuss what is the meaning of charge density before we move on to the questions. You see, you will find the derivations of this uh, formula, NAQV, right, in your book and uh, in some other syllabuses as well. You can go on there and check that how we make this formula, NET, into this one. Your job, you can do this on your own. Now, let's understand what every variable represents. So, Q is a constant, which is a value of 1.6 power minus 19. So, I'm not going to discuss this. value constant. What is N, what is A, and what is V? So, koi bhi cross-sectional conductor, koi bhi conductor hamare paas, uska ye jo cross-sectional area hai, jo face hai, is ki value ko humne A rakha hua. It could be in any shape. It could be a square, could be a sphere, could be circular, could be anything, but uska surface area is A. The surface area that the electrons are going to encounter for the very first time, what options do they have, right? So, of course, if you cross section area, if you increase the cross-section area, then the current will increase. Its capacity is going to increase. Uh, just like the traffic example. If the road is wide, then the other traffic will be wide. If the road is thin, then the road will be difficult. Similarly, we have uh, this concept of N, which is called the charge density. Now, what is the meaning of charge density? It simply means number of electrons passing per unit volume or possessed by that uh, system per unit volume. Well, let's say that copper, hai, aluminium, hai, silver, hai. they are metals. Their charge densities are very high because they possess a lot of electrons for a given volume, right? So how many are there? And this is usually a very high number. Ke one meter cube, mein kitne electrons present hai aapke paas to help or to aid the conduction of electricity. So this is N. Hai aapke paas, hai? And V is called the drift velocity. Isko drift velocity kyun bolna hai? Because when we are not applying any potential difference, let's say that there is no voltage across the cell. When there is no voltage, the electrons are moving randomly through the structure like this. Pe bhi ja sakte. That is also a velocity, right? To differentiate that velocity from directed velocity in which voltage is applied and now the electrons are moving due to the electric field, this specific direction velocity is called as termin uh, drift velocity. So, we have a different name for the name change so that we can differentiate so that we can differentiate that the directed velocity when it, the potential difference is applied is different from when they are moving randomly when no voltage is applied. Okay? Okay. So, we just have to use this formula and let's see where this formula is going to be used and let's see how we use Q equals to IT and this formula. Let's see. So, very first question taken from a very old past paper, May June 2003, but this is an interesting question. Uh, because it also signifies paper three qualities as well. Practical. So it says component reduces uniformly from 100 milliampere to 20 milliampere over a period of eight seconds. How much charge flows? Now, isko straight away karne koshi karenge to solve nahi hoga. So you have to draw a graph to fully understand it. So this is your current and this is your time t. So let's say that previously the value of current was 100 milliampere and eventually, ye milli ko nahi bolna, apne milli is still a part of this and reduces to 20 milliampere over a period of 8 seconds. So let's say it reduces up to this point in a period of 8 seconds. 
and now the current coordinate is actually at 20 millisecond the graph actually encloses at this point we are supposed to find that the total charge flowed that has flowed through the conductor or through the resistor but how can we do that so if i analyze the formula i is equal to q divided by t i have i i have t i want to find q so let's take this over there and realize that q is equal to i t now how can i relate this to the graph if i look closely if i multiply i with t or y axis with x axis i can realize that this is actually basically asking me to find the area under the graph right so now i have multiple choices i can find the area of this triangle half bh and this rectangle as length into width and then add them together or i can use the formula for trapezium i'm going to use the formula for trapezium that is uh, addition of parallel heights so 1 over 2 into sum of parallel heights which is 100 plus 20 which is 100 plus 20 parallel height sum multiplied by the distance between them distance between the parallel lines is 8 seconds so when you're done with this you get 480 millicoulombs notice that i didn't convert this into milli i didn't convert milli to amperes why because the answers also possess a milli factor so this milli will actually fall into place at the end of the calculation automatically so this is going to be option c so that is how this question uh, or this formula is going to be used or the exam is going to trick you to use this equation like this question number 30 from may june 2018 paper 1 3 so he has given us the area he has given us the current he has given us the charge density as well and he's asking us to find out the drift velocity very straightforward question so i equals to n a q v and most of the values we are already familiar with so this i is equal to 56 into 10 days to power minus 6 because it's micro amperes charge density is 2 0 power 3 so this is 2 into 10 days to power 13 now notice that this is per centimeter cube so i don't need to convert this area into meter cube because already one value is instant is uh, in centimeter cube cross section area is given to me as one centimeter cube so in place of a i write down one q is the standard charge which is 1.6 into 10 is for minus 19 multiplied by drift velocity which was which i was going to find out now making v the subject of the formula all of these things are going to go to that side and uh, become the denominator so if i were to do this what was going to happen so fraction 56 e minus 6 divided by use brackets so 2 power 13 into 1 although no need to write this down but let's say for the interest of science okay 1.6 minus 19 when you calculate this your answer comes out as 17.5 now notice that this velocity v 17.5 has a unit of centimeters per second why because you were dealing with centimeter square centimeter cube so this is an answer in terms of centimeters per second our answers are in meters per second now notice what he has done he has also given you the answer as the same number but uh, you most of the students are going to ignore the unit but now we have to convert this into meter per second so simply divide this with 100 this gives you 0 0.175 meters per second which is of course up to two significant figures option a so please be careful about the units about this okay so we have understood uh, how we can do this first part of the syllabus first part of the course of uh, this electricity and we understand the questions as well uh, moving on to this part again uh, i will attach the link of uh, potential difference power current voltage of o levels and uh, of o levels and igcc basics but it is assumed before we start with this lesson that you already know these things he says define potential difference okay let's define this so we have voltage is equal to work done divided by charge we have two types of voltages the first one is called potential difference which is usually ac across the component across the load across the resistors and then we have emf which is usually regarding the source voltage now, what is the difference? If you work done by charge, you have voltage, what is the difference? So, I will straight away you that the component of voltage is small, so the electrical will convert to the other thing. The bulb, hai, fan, hai, heater, hai. Sare electrical energy, le rahe, but they are converting them into something other, something, some other source of energy, some, some other type of energy. So, what is the difference between the electrical and the electrical? The voltage will be the potential difference, hai, and this usually happens across a component across a resistor only resistors have this quality to do this or jo cheez koi bhi or source ko energy ko lekar taking in any other source of energy and converts it into purely electrical energy uski voltage if you measure the voltage of that appliance or that element that will be known as emf so agar aap turbine ko dekh lo generator ko dekh lo jo ki dam pe lagi hui hai to wo gravitational potential of water ko kis mein convert kar raha hai electrical energy ke andar to wo bhi emf kehlayega 
if you look at a diesel or petrol uh, generator what are they trying to do they're converting chemical potential of the petrol or diesel or methane or biogas into mechanical energy and eventually if the generator is connected then electrical energy so uh, and even for a cell or a battery chemical potential of the chemical reactions taking place on the anode and cathode are eventually converting into what they're converting into electrical sources theek hai to jo cheeze electrical energy bana ke de de unki voltage is emf jo electrical energy consume karke kuch aur bana ke de de aapka koi kaam karte hain work done karte hain to wo potential difference hai so we understand this so this is what he said the energy transfer per unit charge because work done is joules and q is charge theek hai so agar to resistor ke paas hain to energy transfer to the resistor aur agar battery ke paas hain to energy taken from the battery uh, per unit charge theek hai and of course recall v is equal to w by q jis equation se humne sara start kiya tha to hame ye cheeze pata hai already and then we get to the formula of p equals to uh, vi i square r v square r bante kaise hain हमारे पास वी हैव स्टैंडर्ड फॉर्मुला पी इक्वल्स टू आई बी एंड ओम स्लॉ विच इज वी इक्वल्स टू आई आर सो इफ यू प्लेस वी इन टू दिस तो पहला तो ये फॉर्मुला बन गया हमारे पास द सेकंड फॉर्मुला इज दैट इफ यू रिप्लेस इन प्लेस ऑफ वी आई आर दिस बिकम्स आई स्क्वेयर आर सो वी आर फेमिलियर विद द सेकंड फॉर्मुला इज वेल हाउ टू मेक द थर्ड वन सो थर्ड वन वी स्टार्ट विद पी इक्वल्स टू आई वी एंड लेट्स ए इन दिस सिस्टम वी रिप्लेस वी डिवाइड बाई आर इक्वल्स टू आई सो लेट्स रिप्लेस आई इन दिस इक्वेशन so this becomes v by r multiply by v so what does that become v square over r so what are we trying to say here we are trying to say that uh, all three formulas of power are actually analogous to one another they are equally uh, they are going to give you the same answers if used correctly fayda kya hoga ki kabhi kabhi aapke paas current nahi hota voltage aur resistance hoti hai to aap power nikal sakte hain kabhi kabhi aapke paas voltage nahi hoti sirf current hota hai to aap power nikal sakte hain कभी कभी आप रेजिस्टेंस और वोल्टेज करंट रेजिस्टेंस नहीं होती तो फिर आप वोल्टेज और करंट को मल्टीप्लाई करके पावर निकाल सकते हैं सो दैट इज यूटिलिटी ऑफ दीज थ्री फॉर्मुलस हमें तीनों आने चाहिए वी मस्ट नो ऑल थ्री फॉर्मुलस वी कॉन्ट गेट अराउंड विद जस्ट नोइंग वी आई एंड वी इक्वल्स टू आई आर एंड देन मेकिंग फॉर्मुल ऑन द स्पॉट यू नीड टू मेमराइज दम टू क्विकली यूटिलाइज दम इन योर कैलकुलेशन और क्वेश्चन लेट्स मूव ऑन टू द क्वेश्चन हाउ वी गिंग टू सॉल्व दम यूज कैसे करेंगे सो इन दिस क्वेश्चन यू कैन सी दट द वोल्टेज आर नॉट गिवन Uh, some students might argue that we have the current we have the resistance we can use v equals to ir to find out the voltage and then we can use p equals to ip again what is the problem with this strategy you're doing an a levels paper you need to save time as much as possible we can't afford these two step answers for all the four options especially when he asks that what is the greatest power to wo to hame saron pe try karna padega we can't do that so if we remember the formula of current and resistance that is i square r now i can simply straight away calculate this being 8 square multiplied by 2 this being 4 square multiplied by 6 this being current which is 6 of course 6 square multiplied by 4 and 2 square multiplied by 8 once i'm done with this i realize that the answer for first part ab ye calculator pe try kar sakte hain the first part comes out as 128 watts this comes out as sorry part b comes out as 144 watts option c comes out as Uh, 96 watts and option D comes out as 32 watts. You can try this on your own. So, it's the largest power dissipation. Ki baat ke so that is option B, which is 144 watts. Again, you could have used V equals to I R and two-stepped this question, but we don't need to do that. We need to save time. Okay, moving on to this question. Again, uh, looks like an out of so sort of out of syllabus question, but don't need to worry about this. He's asking you about the mean power dissipation. You see. even if through a resistor let's say this is a resistor the current is flowing in this direction as 2 amperes and the next moment agle hi lamhe pata chalta hai ki current negative direction mein ja raha hai in this direction does the resistor care about this fact that the current is moving in the opposite direction does it need to care about it usko koi farak padega would it make any difference no the resistor will still release energy it will still remove energy or will still convert that energy into heat it's its job either the current goes towards right side or left side it can't uh, discriminate between them So if he's asking me about mean power then I'm going to what I'm going to do I'm going to calculate the power in this region as P1 in this region as P2 and simply divide the two because I want to find the mean power and the power with respect to current and resistance simply formula is equal to I square R so let's calculate the power for the first region which is going to be simply current 2 square so 2 whole square into 100 because 100 is the resistance given to me then for the second half I am going to use the formula similar again This is going to be one square into one hundred. Now, of course, uh, if you do the square, 
दिस इज गोइंग टू बिकम पॉजिटिव विच इज वाई आई सेट कि कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ेगा आप चाहे नेगेटिव वोल्टेज दे दें नेगेटिव करंट दे दें द रजिस्टर इज स्टिल गोइंग टू कंज्यूम एनर्जी नो मैटर यू वे टू लुक एट इट सो वेन यू डू दैट सिंस वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड मीन पावर आई हैव टू टेक द एवरेज वन यू डिवाइड दिस होल नंबर विद टू दिस इज गोइंग टू कम आउट इज फाइव हंड्रेड वाई द वे फाइव हंड्रेड वॉट्स डिवाइड बाई टू गिवज यू टू हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी वॉट्स विच इज ऑप्शन सी सो आई वी अंडरस्टैंड दिस पॉइंट इज वेल दैट रजिस्टर्स कंज्यूम एनर्जी इन बोथ डायरेक्शन इट डज नॉट मैटर वेदर यू फ्लिप द बैटरी और नॉट ओके uh then this is a very common question in terms of um, f- complete understanding of power and how to use and work with voltage you see this question can be solved in many many methods possible whatever you're comfortable with uh, you can take away those points from this lesson it's your choice aam taur pe aapko wo voltages aur powers nahi deta theek hai it's good luck or you can say you consider yourself lucky that these values are at least given to you because what will be the benefit of this you can find out their resistances and respective currents so if we had a healthy let's say uh, a heating element which is labeled in this question we can use the formula p equals to iv to at least find out the it find out its current how much current it requires so let's do that so we have 1000 watts of power we don't know the current and it is functioning at 230 when i do that the current it normally draws under normal circumstances comes out to be 4. 3 फाइव एम्पेयर्स सो एक वैल्यू तो ये निकाल लिया आपने ठीक है कोई बात नहीं लेट्स फाइंड आउट इट्स रेजिस्टेंस फॉर रेजिस्टेंस वी हैव पी इक्वल्स टू आई स्क्वेर आर सो वी हैव 1000 थाउजेंड वॉट्स ऑफ पावर द करंट इज फोर पॉइंट थ्री फाइव होल स्क्वेयर इन टू आर सो आर कम्स आउट एज फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट नाइन ओम्स योर आंसर कुड भी डिफरेंट बट दिस इज वट आई एम गेटिंग सो नॉट अ लॉट ऑफ डिफरेंस इट कुड भी फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट एट इट कुड भी फिफ्टी फिफ्टी थ्री राइट सो जस्ट वन डेसिमल प्लेस ऑफ डिफरेंस कुड भी देर based on how many calculations or how many decimal places you are taking but abhi to ye nikal gayi values theek hai accept it ye bhi pata chal gaya ye bhi pata chal gaya achhi baat hai koi masla nahi ab hum agle sawal ko figure out kar sakte hain but what if these values were not given to you what would you have done then let's let's figure out it we'll figure it out in terms of both techniques you see when they are connected in parallel the theoretical way of handling with this would be that both are going to demand their individual currents and individual power source or individual current from the source so both will demand their standard current which if values were not given i would have assumed to be i now the battery has to supply a current of 2i and if this was assumed to be voltage v then power standard power was equal to piv but now since two are connected i'm drawing a current of 2i in through a voltage of v the power has become two times iv which is compared to the standard this power has become two times the original power which is p not so i would have written down over here at least two times p not or the standard power but ye given nahi hai hame to values given hai theek hai so those values are 1000 watts of each resistance so i i can see that the volt the power is going to get doubled kyunki ye bhi 1000 watts ka hai ye bhi 1000 watts ka hai so the power consumption of this circuit will be 2000 watts that is what happens in hair dryers as well when you uh, convert them from a low setting to high power setting what are what are they actually trying to do एक हीटर के साथ दूसरा हीटर भी इंगेज होता है सो नाउ एट दैट टाइम उस वक्त हेयर ड्रायर में दो हीटर इकट्ठे चल रहे होते दैट्स व्हाई इट स्टार्ट्स टू हीट अप मच वायलेंटली एज कंपेयर टू द अदर सिचुएशन और प्रीवियस सिचुएशन ठीक है और राइट नाउ लेट्स ट्राई टू डू दिस इन टर्म्स ऑफ सिंपल वैल्यूज अगर ये लॉजिक भी हमसे डिवेलप नहीं होता वैल्यू से ही करना था तो कर लो कोई मसला नहीं नाउ यू ड्रॉइंग अ करंट ऑफ आई थ्रू ईच ऑफ दैम सो इफ यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट पी इक्वल्स टू आई स्क्वेयर आर तो आप क्या करते हैं यहाँ सिंपल आई वी भी करना होता सो द करंट इज फोर पॉइंट थ्री फाइव होल स्क्वेयर Now since you're drawing current for two appliances, तो चलो एक कर लेते हैं मल्टीप्लाई बाई रेजिस्टेंस विच इज फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट नाइन आप कैलकुलेट करोगे आपका आंसर थाउजेंड वॉट्स आ जाएगा विच इज इंटिव क्योंकि इन्हीं को यूज करके थाउजेंड को ही तो यूज करके हमने आंसर निकाले हैं सारे तो रिवर्स इंजीनियर तो हम कर चुके हैं राइट सो पॉइंट ऑफ द मैटर इज दैट अगर फोर पॉइंट थ्री फाइव इसके पास जा रहे हैं फोर पॉइंट थ्री फाइव इसके पास जा रहे हैं इसी आंसर को जब टू से मल्टीप्लाई करोगे वाई बिकॉज टू अपलाइंस आर ड्रॉइंग द करंट यूर गोइंग टू गेट आंसर एज टू थाउजेंड वॉट्स जो कि हमारी पुरानी प्रडिक्शन है that since they are both demanding individual currents voltage is same the the total power is going to be 2000 watts power is going to get added together so no matter you want to look at it from the ratio perspective or mathematical perspective it's your choice if you are uncomfortable with this you want to apply the voltage because parallel voltage same rehti hai to aap wo bhi kar sakte ho that would have been 230 ka square divided by 52.9 because we know that power electrical power in terms of voltage is v square divided by r agar aap ye bhi karte to aapke paas iska answer 1000 aana tha fir aapko iske liye bhi karna padna tha और क्योंकि दोनों एनर्जी कंज्यूम कर रहे हैं तो आपको दोनों करना पड़ेगा और अगर बैटरी के पर्सपेक्टिव से देखते 
तो हाउ मच पावर बैटरी इज सेंडिंग सो पावर बैटरी इज सेंडिंग टू टाइम्स द करंट विच इज फोर पॉइंट थ्री फाइव मल्टीप्लाई बाई एट वोल्टेज ऑफ थ्रू टू थर्टी इसका आंसर एग्जैक्ट टू थाउजेंड वॉट आ जाता है दोबारा से तो फिर वही बात आ गई बैटरी के परस्पेक्टिव से देख लो रेशो से देख लो जैसे मर्जी देख लो दिस इज आई एम डिस्कसिंग दिस बिकॉज ये जो सिलेबस का पार्ट है पॉइंट नंबर थ्री इट अल्लाह इट इट इंक्वायर्स या आप कह सकते हैं कि इट रिक्वायर्स द स्टूडेंट्स टू थिंक लाइक दिस हाउ वी आर थिंकिंग राइट नाउ ये रेशो मेथड की कैलकुलेशन और एटलीस्ट हमें पता होना चाहिए क्योंकि इट विल हेल्प अस इन द नेक्स्ट इनकमिंग पार्ट आप देखेंगे ना इसमें क्या हुआ देखो रेशो से भी सॉल्व करते हैं और मैथिक्स मैथमेटिक्स से भी करते हैं रेशो से करेंगे तो क्या होगा अगर ये वोल्टेज ना गिवन होती और सिर्फ यहाँ पे वी लिखा होता और ये रेजिस्टेंसेज ना पता होती आर लिखा होता तो अब क्या होगा If they are identical, the voltage division between them is going to be equal because they are connected in series. Series में voltage divide हो जाती है. So they would have gotten V by two, and this would have gotten V by two. ठीक है. Simple as that. Or since they are both connected in series, the resistance has doubled. So according to V equals to I R, if you increase the resistance, the current decreases. क्योंकि resistance आपने double कर दी है, तो current क्या हो जाना चाहिए I by two. ठीक है. Let's try to solve them by both methods. Anyways, अगर voltage से करते तो क्या करना पड़ता? Total power कैसे निकलती? पहले इसकी पावर निकालते फिर इसकी निकालते दोनों को ऐड कर देते लेट्स डू दैट सो वी हैव द फॉर्मूला वी स्क्वायर ओवर आर प्लस वी स्क्वायर ओवर आर तो पहले केस में वोल्टेज हाफ हो रही सो वी बाई टू का होल स्क्वायर डिवाइड बाय आर प्लस वी बाई टू का होल स्क्वायर डिवाइडेड बाय आर एंड यू विल रियलाइज दिस कम्स आउट एज वी स्क्वायर बाय फोर आर प्लस वी स्क्वायर बाय फोर आर विच इज गोइंग टू कम आउट एज वी स्क्वायर बाय आर इंटू टू सो इवेंचुअली क्या हो गया ये तो हाफ हो गई पावर स्टैंडर्ड की हाफ हो गई क्योंकि स्टैंडर्ड पावर क्या है हमारे पास फॉर so this i current is passing through these resistances the total power would have been the power of both of them so i square r plus i square r would have been i by 2 whole square r plus i by 2 whole square r this would have been i square r by 4 plus i square r by 4 adding them together would have given me i square r by 2 which is again p by 2 half of the original power again giving me an answer of 0.5 kilowatts so this is how the ratio method deals with the problem right and if you wanted to add values then please be my guest you can add these values which you've calculated for resistance for current for voltage for power you will again get these answers because you have to start with the premise that the voltage is going to divide the the current previously was let's say 4.35 now it's going to get halved so this is let's let's divide the current by 2 so 4.35 divided by 2 Gives you 2.16. You're going to deal with 2.16 uh, ampere of current, uh, 52.9 ohms of resistance because resistance is constant, and voltage on each of them will be half of 230, which is 115, 115 volts. Even if you use those formulas of P equals to V square over R, I square R, or I V, you will get this answer. दोनों की अलग-अलग पावर निकाल के ऐड करोगे 500 वॉट्स ही बनना है. So either use ratio method logically. or you can use the the values given in the question to you now this is tricky uh is ko ab values ke bagair bhi kar sakte ho but how are you going to do that you see uh standard voltage is given to us and if you were dealing with v equals to ir then uh, no matter what i do with resistance reciprocal effect will happen with the current as well so let's do that so let's find out the resistance this is the mathematical uh, sorry logical way so these two are connected in parallel right so their equivalent resistance would be actually half this is a shortcut that we have for parallel resistance ke agar wo dono barabar hai to resistance overall half ho jati hai and this is already r to jab ye r r by 2 ke sath series mein lagega to total resistance kya ban gayi so r total comes out as 3 by 2 r yani 1.5 times to voltage to humne nahi badli so what can i do with current multiply by resistance ab humne resistance 1 se badha kar 3 by 2 r kar di hai What should I do with voltage? What should I do with current? Or what should happen with current? So that today's voltage will be 230 and today's voltage will be standard. So if I have increased the resistance, the current should decrease. But in such a way, the answer will be the same. So if I multiply this with the reciprocal, if I multiply it with 2 by 3, then what will be the benefit? What will be the benefit? 3 cancel with 3, 2 cancel with 2, and of course, I'm going to get the standard value of voltage. So this inverse technique helps us to figure out that the current through the circuit eventually at this point is actually 
2 by 3i as compared to the original case or as compared to the standard case when they were connected in a single format or a single fashion ab of course aapke paas current aa gaya voltage aa gayi hai ab aap i jo ke hum upar nikal chuke hain which is 4.35 amperes wo put karke simple battery power nikal sakte which is iv which would have been 2 by 3 into 4.35 into 230 to bhi aapka answer aa jayega or you could have done this uh in terms of uh, ratio method which is this that if you know now today the current then this would have been p equals to i square r which would have been 2 by 3 i whole square into r which is going to come out as 2 by 3 i square r dusra aap kya kar or of course this is not just r this is going to be 3 by 2 r because aaj ki resistance to 3 by 2 hai theek hai so this will be 3 by 2 r this is method number 1 मेथड नंबर टू वोल्टेज से रिलेटेड ठीक है नाउ अगर आपको पता चल गया है कि दिस इज द करंट ठीक है एंड देयर रेजिस्टेंस इज हाफ एंड देयर रेजिस्टेंस इज वन बाय टू देन यू कैन यूज पोटेंशियल डिवाइडर अगेन और यू कैन जस्ट लुक एट द सोर्स वोल्टेज राइट सो सोर्स के इस तरफ से क्या होगा पी इक्वल्स टू वट इज द करंट दैट यू ड्रॉइंग फ्रॉम द सोर्स दैट इज टू बाई थ्री आई एंड वट्स द वोल्टेज वोल्टेज से स्टैंडर्ड विच इज गोइंग टू बी टू बाय थ्री आई वी विच इज गोइंग टू बी टू बाय थ्री पी नॉट और द स्टैंडर्ड पावर so if you want to go through voltage then of course you'll have to use the circuit division method which is uh, going to look like this that one standard resistor of value r and one standard resistor of value r by 2 to dono pe pehle voltage divider lagate fir v square over r lagate fir power nikalte fir add karte tab bhi yahi answer aana tha jo bhi aa raha hai so either do it with ratio method or do with values it's your choice so now if we understand this 2 by 3 p not and we know that p not is 1000 watts so 2 divided by 3 into p not is equal to 2 by 3 multiplied by 1000 which is going to come out as 666.67 watts kyunki kilowatts mein likhna so this is going to become 0.67 kilowatts theek hai so i hope that we understand this idea as well so the next part of this uh, chapter it belongs to resistance and resistivity this will be covered in the second part of this video uh i will also attach the link of uh, the whole chapter so that you can uh, quickly navigate between the part series of this chapter okay